Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Now that I have gone through my top running backs out of the top 50 and the top 100 ADP, it is time to look at the wide receiver position. Today's video is regarding five of my favorite wide receivers that are currently sitting outside of the top 50 in ADP. These are guys that I think could really hit big and produce for us even though they're not being drafted like it. Now, if you guys have any questions or comments, always drop those down below. I love the engagement and we can get better by working through these players and their situations together. Please consider dropping a like on the video today that keeps Relentless Press moving forward and subscribing always helps as well. We are well on our way to our first 1,000 subscribers. If you have not done so yet and you click that button, you can be a part of the journey. So in the video today, I am breaking down these five wide receivers, both personally and their team situations give you guys the whys behind the reasons I think they are going to hit for us this season. So the first guy I'm looking at that I absolutely love as a wide out outside of the top 50 picks is Christian Kirk. He's going as the 26th receiver off the board, pick number 53. And the first thing that we're gonna notice about him is that strength of schedule. He is projected to have the easiest schedule in the entire NFL, and a big part of that is the division that he plays in. Now, last year, Kirk had a career year. It was his first real opportunity to become a true wide receiver run. I wanna say that I had my doubts, I admit that. I thought the contract that they gave him was far too big. For the most part, Kirk earned that deal. Kirk is coming off of a career year in 2022 where he set career highs in basically every relevant statistical category. He was wide receiver 18 in fantasy points per game last year. He also posted a 23% target share. And another thing that we love about his profile is that he had the fifth highest red zone targets in the league. So it is clear that Trevor Lawrence trusts him in close and Trevor Lawrence took a step forward last year so to be the number one receiver for that guy is always going to have an added benefit now detractors may state that calvin ridley is returning and he is going to sap looks and while that might be the case we also have to understand that Calvin Ridley is probably not going to affect red zone targets because of his size, and he is also a massive unknown after over a year away from the game of football. So sure, Calvin Ridley could come in and pick up right where he left off, but with that much rust on him, I doubt that that happens, which gives Kirk the leg up early, and then that just continues from what we saw from him last season. The Jags play in the weakest division. Like I said, that is why his strength of schedule is so good. So that is gonna give us plenty of awesome matchups to exploit throughout the course of the year. And we're gonna know a lot of times when those are, because when we see a divisional game, most likely the defenses are going to be below average and they're going to be more scoring opportunities. So we talked about all the success that Kirk saw last season. And we also wanna take into consideration he did that in a first year offense with a brand new head coach as well. All those moving pieces. Kirk was still the wide receiver 14 overall last season, and he is now being drafted outside of wide receiver two land. That just does not add up to me. Reasons why that might be is touchdown regression, but guess what? Kirk just had eight touchdowns last year. It's a decent amount, but it is not something that is going to fall way back down to earth that we have to worry about that negative regression for. Should Kirk continue to ascend and continue to build and strengthen that rapport that he has with Trevor Lawrence. He is easily a top 20, probably a top 15 wide receiver once again for the Jags in 2023. The next wide receiver I want to take a look at is Marquise Brown out of Arizona. He's currently being drafted as wide receiver 34 at 72 overall. The reason for the dive in current ADP for Brown is the situation with Kyler Murray. We do not know exactly when he is going to play. He said that his aim right now is for week one, but of course it is. What else do we expect him to say? So Murray injured his ACL later in the season last year, so it is probably pretty unlikely that he makes it back right away. 
We have to take that into consideration when we are drafting Brown. But the other things that we want to look at give us hope that even if Murray misses the first couple games of the season, Brown is going to be able to be a hit for us and repay on his price tag. So let's look at what those things might be. First and foremost, we know that Hollywood is going to be the clear number one option for an offense that is going to be doing its fair share of airing it out. We had a couple of wide receivers step up for Arizona last year but none of them really took the reins of a number two job and then ran with it. There's really no one that is going to threaten Brown. And what he did last year was explode when healthy. He was wide receiver six through the first six weeks of 2022 while Hopkins was suspended. Hollywood averaged over 12 points a game and half PPR in the eight games that he played without Nuke last year. And he also earned a 24% target share. So plenty of looks and those are gonna continue to come this season regardless who is quarterback for Arizona. Marquise was also a top 12 scorer in over a quarter of his games last season. So when he hit, he had weak changing potential. And we are gonna get that at a massive discount based on that Kyler Murray injury. We want to keep a close eye on it because if Murray looks like he is going to be back earlier, surely this ADP is going to rise. Murray threw for 50 touchdowns combined in 2020 and 2021. So obviously the sooner he is back, the better for Brown, but that is that ceiling that we look for when we are trying to target these late round picks. We also know that Arizona is in a full-blown rebuild. They are likely going to be down and throwing a lot to try to work themselves back into games. This is not a team that has an excellent defense and they're gonna win a 13-10 slugfest. So game script should be positive for Brown more often than not. And that is something we are always looking for as well. At his current price, with a solid strength of schedule, no real threat to his target share, and an offense that is going to need to put a lot of balls in the air in 2023. There are very few picks that have the value that Marquise Brown could offer in 2023. Next up on my list to look at is George Pickens. He's just inside wide receiver three land, sitting at wide receiver 35, the 75th pick overall. He had some big time moments last year, got a ton of hype in the preseason, and it really just took off from there. When we have to look at what he had around him in 2022, not a lot of good. He had an offensive line that was absolute dumpster fire and a quarterback situation that ended up being one of the worst in the NFL. So when we think about that, really what Pickens was able to put together last season was very impressive. He had six weeks last year where he finished in the top 24 as a wide receiver too, which is great as a rookie. And he was able to produce those finishes even though the Steelers wanted to be as run heavy as they possibly could be. In the first half of the season before they started really leaning on Kenny Pickett, Pickens compiled a target share of over 15%, but he did have a 26% air yard share. You love to see that number because that means they are targeting him deep, and those mean big time opportunities for big plays and touchdowns more often than not. So solid but not spectacular numbers for Pickens in 2022 but let's look at what 2023 might offer in that wide receiver room there are not a ton of threats for him the number one here is probably still deontay johnson but going into last year i thought that johnson was going to have a big time year and was clearly the number one guy and that did not prove to be the case so there is a scenario a non-zero chance that this wide receiver room actually becomes picking sooner than later and he ascends to that wide receiver one role. We already saw the rapport that he had with Kenny Pickett was way better than what Deontay Johnson showed us. So there is no reason to think that that doesn't continue this year. The next thing we look at is who was brought in as competition and really the Pittsburgh Steelers didn't bring in anyone and if they did it was more helpful for Pickens than I would consider hurtful and that was because they brought in Allen Robinson. This addition does not scare me one bit because if you saw anything from Allen 
last year, which was probably hard to because he didn't do a heck of a lot. It is pretty clear to me, at least at this point, that Robinson is washed up and someone that will slide into that wide receiver three role okay and do what they need him to do, but he is not someone who will threaten Pickens as far as his per game numbers a whole lot. Talked a little bit about the quarterback situation, how it was not ideal for Pittsburgh going between Kenny Pickett and Mitch Trubisky last year. This year it is Pickett's team. So being able to go into the season knowing that, not having to worry about who that quarterback is going to be and just focusing on getting better, that is going to help that connection between Pickett and Pickens from the get-go. Pickens has shown us that he has wide receiver two upside. He just has to do that more consistently. And if he gets that time to build that rapport and strengthen it with Kenny Pickett, there is a great opportunity for him in 2023. The next wide receiver that I want to dissect is Jordan Addison. He is going as the wide receiver 40 right now, just in the top 90 picks. The first thing that I want to talk about with Addison is the opportunity that he is walking into. It is one of the reasons that I love him this season. Minnesota moved away from longtime wideout Adam Thielen in the offseason. And Thielen is leaving behind a massive hole to be filled in this offense. In 2022, Thielen saw a 17% target share. He had 107 targets, 716 yards, and six tutties. And these numbers came even though Thielen was a sub 50 producer in yards per route run and route win rate, which are two key metrics that tell us how consistent and how productive a receiver is on a per touch basis when they are given decent opportunities. So if Thielen was able to produce numbers like that, even though he was not an elite or even average receiver on a per route basis, that leads me to believe that a first round pick, someone that Minnesota heavily invested in with a lot of talent and upside should be able to easily exceed these metrics. He ranked top 25, Addison did, in each of the last two seasons in yards per route run and in PFF receiving grade. So we see the opportunities that were left behind with Addison. Thielen going and that role that Addison could step right into. We also see that he has the capability over multiple seasons of being one of the top ranked receivers, albeit in college football. Now let's look at the other things that Minnesota is going to offer Addison in this offense. They were a top three team in neutral passing rate last year and they were second in red zone passing rate as well. So the Vikings continue to throw the ball when they were in close and plenty of touchdown opportunities for Addison are coming and how do we know that because Kirk Cousins is a guy who throws touchdowns. Kirk has averaged over 30 touchdown passes and nearly 4,200 passing yards in the last five seasons with Minnesota. So there is a whole lot of pie to be shared in that Vikings passing attack. We also want to look at the Vikings are now in year two of Kevin O'Connell's system. Last year was the first time that these players were learning and understanding what O'Connell wanted to do to change the offense, which was a massive adjustment. So we have to believe that these players are going to get more comfortable in this new system and take another step forward, which could mean that the numbers that we just saw could be even bigger for Kirk, for the Vikings, and for Addison in 2023. You may have also heard of a other receiver Minnesota has in Justin Jefferson. And having the league's best wideout working opposite of you is always going to be beneficial. The matchups that he is going to get on a game in and game out basis are going to be some of the easier ones that he could possibly hope for. The Vikings also added TJ Hawkinson, who is going to be a handful for defenses to have to worry about. So Addison is probably going to be covered by the third best corner or the second best safety from an opposing team, and he has got the talent to be able to take advantage of that. He still should have no reason finishing in wide receiver three territory, and being drafted right now as wide receiver 40, you can still get him at a discount. The last wide up that I want to look at is probably going to get me in a little hot water. I was all over him last year and he did not work out. 
but the price is too good and I am going back to the well. The guy I'm talking about is Gabe Davis. He was a preseason hype darling last season and I fell for it and I understand that, but everything is still on the table for him and in front of him in 2023 and we are not paying the premium this year that we had to last year to get him on our squad. So even though last year, he went as a top 20 pick. Some people had him as a top 15 wide receiver on their big boards. And I know that it didn't work out. He was just wide receiver 36. So that price plummeting is totally fine with me. I will take the insane discount on the upside. And I am always down to buy that upside. We know that Davis is not going to be a consistent weekly producer. And that is fine because there is no one that is in his price range that can match the upside he is offering and he can win you your week on any given Sunday. Last year Gabe Davis was 12th in deep targets. He was also 6 in 8 out which is average depth of target. That means big plays are going to be coming his way. Josh Allen has a propensity from giving him opportunities deep and all he has to do is capitalize on a couple more this season and he would have had a drastically different outcome and view for drafters coming coming into this year. The Bills did not bring anyone in of note this season in the offseason. They must still believe that Davis has the ability to take the next step for them. Just like Jordan Addison, having Stefan Diggs play next to you is a boost for Gabe Davis, and he is going to get better matchups continuously because of that. We also know that the Bills are going to keep putting up points. They will score a ton. They averaged over 28 points per game last year, and it would surprise me if they didn't do that or better in 2023. So I want pieces of this offense, and if I can get it at a discounted price because of what happened or didn't happen last year, I am going to take advantage of it. Davis is going in the seventh or eighth round, so that means that you can more likely than not fill out your entire starting roster before getting him as a wide receiver three, wide receiver four option. And there are very few, if any, players at his price that have the upside that he possesses. And that is the last wide receiver that I have to talk about in this video. Hope you guys enjoyed the content and I hope you learned something. Make sure you crush the like button to continue to get Relentless Press's name out there so we can keep moving forward and get our first 1,000 subscribers. This is Relentless Press. I'm your host, Abraham Opath, and I will see you next time.